Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a problem with Standard currently. Locals has pretty much deteriorated to even less than eight people. I play at two different places and both places barely get off FNM. The last week the tournament organizer had to sign himself up uh, so we could actually have eight people. One of the reasons uh, this is happening is Standard Fatigue. People are very tired of so many different sets. People are very, you know, they don't have as much money to spend because something comes out every single, it, it seems like something comes every other month. You have Commander 2017 coming out soon. You just had Modern Masters where P, the MSRP is 240, but you can get boxes online for under 200 still. You had a reprinting of Eternal Masters. You had Amor Cat recently, which I still believe is a below average set that will be proven out in time. You had more invocations, more masterpieces every single set. You have standard showdown booster packs coming in. There is a feeling of fatigue. And in terms of value, in terms of entertainment per money spent, too much money is being spent on this product with not enough return on entertainment value. So let's get to the solution that is the problem. I don't know if that problem is just where I play or if it's at your local game store too, but there is far fewer people. At pre-releases two years ago, you had a pre-release, same place, same location, 100 people. Amaket pre-release was less than 20. I think it was like 18 people. And out of that 18, 10 people just took their packs and went home. And then the other eight just played out top eight. My gut, and you can tell from your store, it's really obvious to see this. If your store has a lot of pre-release kits, that meant that they didn't do so well in terms of pre-release. And my local store, the local stores I go to, the two ones I go to, they have a ton of pre-release kits. And even fire selling them is not working. So one way to get people back interested in magic that is not a deterrent, I don't know why Wizard of the Coast does not do this more. Because the value, and I will prove it, I will show you an example of the value of these promos. They don't hold value. And that doesn't mean just because we had an A for Hub promo that it couldn't be an Iconic Masters down the road. Because Visions and Path to Exile, which doubled and tripled attendance, FNM attendance at the two, two locals I went to, they're pennies on a dollar now. Path to Exile is $7 and Visions is 2 to $3. I think it's like two fifty right now. So having something like A for Hub is very important. And I know you might say, oh, how would they know if a for hub is a good promo? How do they know if Fatal Push is a good promo? They have a whole testing department. Sometimes they hide under the excuse that, oh, we didn't know. We tested it, but this wasn't what was supposed to happen. I'm sure it, it happens once a blue moon, but not that often when they print a Guardian, which can go infinite with Sahili, and then they have to ban it or they missed banning A for Work Marvel, which is the top deck right now, even though it didn't win the Pro Tour, it is the deck that puts up the best results time and time again, very similar to Sahili combo in terms of numbers of decks that do well, and people playing at f and they test it, they have a whole department to test this. Uh, it's almost inexcusable for them to, can, to not know if a card like reverse engineer is okay. It would have been a lot better as an instant. I'm positive they know because they printed many, many blue cards with similar effects that this is not what the player base is excited about. They're not like, oh, reverse engineer. Hmm, that's gonna get me to go into F and M. One of the problems is the there's not as many younger people at F and M anymore. And because there's not as many younger people, there is a lack of growth in terms of player base. And they rely on selling more expensive stuff like Eternal Masters, like Modern Masters, like Iconic Masters to an older player base with more money. 
That therefore creates an effect that is very tiring for the older player base because A, they, these things are not $4 a pack. These things are $10 a pack for the same. I mean, I guess they say that you have a foil card, but what is the actual cost of that foil card? In August, we get Renegade Rallier, which is a great, it's a good card in modern, but it's not a great card in standard. It's a very powerful card. And out of these promos that we're going to take a look at, we had uh, Disintegrate, which is okay. A for Hub, which is good. We, uh, reverse Engineer, which is not great. Uh, Renegade Rallier, which is okay. And then we have the Fatal Push. They know what cards are going to be good. I'm pretty sure they do because the cards are pushed. Like it's not surprising when people like say that Alma Cat, some people online have said Alma Cat is a very strong set. I don't know what they're talking about unless they're selling cards, unless they want to sell more Alma Cat. Because Alma Cat, in my opinion, is an incredibly weak set when compared to pretty much anything. Like if you compare Alma Cat to RTR, ooh, yikes, right? Uh, and if you compare Alma Cat to Kaladas, or even A for Revolt with the uh, 10, 8 to $10 uncommon. The expected value is just not there long term. Uh, they're not strong enough. Most of the cards, maybe there will be two to four cards that we'll see modern play. Uh, Visor at uncommon definitely already has made a splash. But it won't be the Lilies, it won't be the Gideons, it won't be the Nissas. It won't be the cards that are over $10 today. So let's talk about what Wizard of Coast loses by printing a highly wanted promo. They lose nothing. They do not use, they will still reprint the card. They can print Path to Exile as many times as they want. Just because it is a promo does not mean they cannot reprint it in a master set or any commander deck set because they can do that and they have done it. They don't lose anything in my opinion in terms of value by using good uncommons. Here is my advice to Wizard of the Coast. Look outside of standard. If standard is too hard for you to predict, if you believe reverse engineering is an amazing card when you were playtesting it, and maybe it was, then you can get EDH's uncommons. You can get modern uncommons. You can bring some legacy uncommons. People will eat that up, and you already know the value. That's a solution I have for Wizard of the Coast. Give promos where you already know the value of the promo is going to be high. Now the promo is going to tank. Even the best promos today tanks because there's just too many copies of these things out there. And that's okay and that's actually good for the player base. But it creates this excitement. It creates a reason for people to go to locals. If people are not going to locals because they have other stuff to do. I mean it's Friday night. If you watch my videos you know I have a strong opinion about Friday night magic. And being on Friday night. I would much prefer it to be Saturday night. Friday night is date night. Friday night is when all your friends want to hang out or have parties. They want to go to a bar. Like Friday to me is really difficult. It's hard to explain to my friends what I'm doing Friday. Wait, you're playing Magic on Friday? Why don't you play on Saturday? There's no Saturday Magic, right? Okay, why don't you play on Sunday? And they get confused with pre-release because they know like pre-release is Sunday and, and game day and stuff like that. And we do have events on non-Fridays. However, Friday is, I mean, I mean it's a very social night. Um, and Magic is, I guess, a social game. But perhaps your friends really question what you're doing. At least mine do. And it's, you know, I've explained it to them uh, half a dozen times. And it still doesn't make sense to them. Uh, my significant other, she's starting to play Magic, so she goes to F and M. Uh, she's gone to a total of five, which is not bad because she just started, and she enjoys it. It's kind of fun. But when she explains to her friends uh, what she's doing, she has the same issues I do, but in a even greater, uh, a greater amount, or a greater amount of questioning, I guess. So you look at Visions; it's three dollars. These things do not have to be pricey to get people to come in. They just have to be good. They just have to be played. I'm not asking Wizard of Coast to print like a million amazing uncommons worth $10 a piece right now. I'm just asking them to print cards they know will attract people to go. I never seen more people at my local game store than when it was Path and Envisions. Back to back. People really wanted these promos 
And that's how you get people to store it because if everyone's paying $5, how much prizes do you think the store can give, right? Let's say you have 10 people and they pay $5 each. At most, the store can give you $50 in prizes. But that's not, that's like not even break even because there's air conditioning, electricity, there's employee cost, right? That's, it's a little much. Um, and I fully tell you to support local game stores. It's super important. I know that's not coming out from, people are going to try to sell you on this concept of buying online for cheaper. Buy on TCG Player, buy from Card Kingdom, buy from us, buy from me, buy from me. Um, support your local game store. It might not be around forever. Anyways, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.